and welcome to this Alexa Tech Talk. My name is James Petzinger, and I am a senior solutions architect on the Alexa Everywhere team. My primary focus is human interface design guidance for the developers of third-party Alexa built-in products. When I'm not working to help product designers make delightful, user-friendly products, you could probably find me outdoors with my camera taking nature photographs, or indoors playing Fortnite Battle Royale. Today, I will be talking about what we can do to design better audio volume experiences on Alexa built-in products. We will be talking about physical volume adjustment controls integrated into Alexa built-in products. We will talk about the difference between mute and volume zero. We will discuss area of interaction and how that is important for the user experience, as well as listening level. What does it mean when we talk about the listening level of a product? We will talk about volume reset as a very important part of the user experience of Alexa built-in products. And finally, we will discuss a design guide that is available to developers of ABI products to help enhance the design of the audio volume experience on your products. Audio output volume is a fundamental aspect of all Alexa experiences on a product. During each Alexa interaction, we speak, we see visual information, and we hear. So let's talk about that hearing part and what we as developers can do to make sure that when the hearing part of that interaction is happening, it is a successful part of the interaction. So let's talk about physical volume adjustment controls. It is a fundamental requirement that all Alexa built-in products shall have physical volume adjustment controls. Physical controls are any control elements of a product with which a person can physically interact. These include buttons, capacitive surface touch points, graphical user interface, control elements, etc., integrated into the product and its remote control unit. There are two required volume adjustment controls, volume up and volume down. There is one optional volume control, meaning this is not a requirement, but it is a nice to have, in fact, a recommended to have, if it makes sense for your product, to have an audio output mute. Speaking of mute, let's talk about mute versus volume zero. What's the difference between mute and volume zero? You can't hear anything, so why does that make any difference at all? Why is the difference important? Well, first of all, on an ABI product, mute never refers to the state of the microphones. And that needs to be not only clear to all developers, but it must also be clear to users of Alexa built-in products. Microphones are either on or they are off. Mute is a device state. In this state, all audio output is suppressed. Regardless of what the previous volume level was, the moment you mute that device, audio output has been set to nothing. Unmute is the return of that device to its pre-mute volume level. Now, there's another reason why we're very, very considerate of the word mute when it comes to Alexa. There is an Alexa command, Alexa mute. And if you utter that command, guess what happens? The device mutes itself suppresses all audio output. It has absolutely zero effect on the microphones. The microphones are still on. This is a critical difference, and that's why we never use the term mute to refer to microphones, only to the audio output of the device. Let's talk about the area of interaction, or AOI. The area of interaction of an Alexa built-in product is the expected use area around the product within which a person can experience a successful, delightful, and audible Alexa interaction. 
the AOI of a product is determined by the performance level of the microphone array. This is something you are probably already familiar with because we refer to the performance levels of Alexa built-in products as far field, near field, close talk, and in or on the ear. So when we talk about a far field product, we're talking about a product that has a radius of interaction of nine feet. A near field product has a radius of interaction of three feet, close talk, 12 inches. And as you can see in the illustration, it's been depicted as a circle, but we do understand that there are products that are going to be up against a wall. So consider the half of the circle on the wall side to be not part of the expected use area of the product. We do not expect people to be standing behind a product that is mounted next to a wall. Of course not. But in general terms, we refer to the area of interaction as that circular area determined by the performance level of the microphone array, either far field, near field, close talk, or in and on the ear. Let's talk about listening level. Listening level is the sound pressure level, or SPL, measured at the position of the person listening to audio output from a product. This is what the person is experiencing, not necessarily what the device is putting out, but what the person is experiencing, listening level. Now there is what we call a minimum listening level, or MLL. This minimum listening level is the minimum sound pressure level of a product at which a person may experience an Alexa TTS interaction or have a successful call dropping conversation at the outer limit of the area of interaction. If I am standing nine feet away from a far field product, there is a sound pressure level, a bare minimum that is an acceptable level in order for me to experience an Alexa text to speech response or to have a conversation. Now, in order to achieve that minimum listening level, there must be an MLL setting on the device. The MLL setting is the product volume setting that will produce the MLL at the outer limit of the AOI. And as a matter of requirement for Alexa built-in products, the MLL setting shall produce a sound pressure level of 50 to 60 dB at the outer limit of the area of interaction. So if I have a product that is rated at far field and I am standing nine feet away from that product, I should experience 50 to 60 dB sound pressure level when I am having an interaction with Alexa. This is an important factor in understanding how to design what we're going to talk about next volume reset. If a product has been set to mute or to volume zero and a person starts an interaction with Alexa, it is necessary to automatically reset the volume to provide the person with a successful audible Alexa experience. For example, let's say that there are two people in a household with an Alexa built-in product. Person A has been listening to music and for whatever reason says Alexa mute, or maybe the product has a mute button and they hit the mute button and now all output audio has been suppressed. And then they leave the room. They're done, they're gone. Now person B comes into the room later on and they say something like, Alexa, what's the weather tomorrow? Well. Person B deserves an answer to their question. They deserve to hear the weather forecast for tomorrow. It is not appropriate for the listening visual cue, the thinking visual cue, and the speaking visual cues to show up on the product without the accompanying Alexa response 
there must be a volume reset in order for that person to hear the weather forecast. It's, again, necessary to automatically reset the volume to provide that person with a successful, audible Alexa experience. This is where minimum listening level comes into the picture. What volume level should the product be reset to in order for that person to have an Alexa experience that is audible and successful? The minimum listening level, 50 to 60 dB at the outer limit of the area of interaction. And whatever volume setting is necessary for that product to produce that sound pressure level is what the product needs to be reset to in order for that person B to hear their weather forecast. There are many scenarios and conditions where automatic volume reset is a critical part of creating a delightful, audible Alexa experience on an Alexa built-in product. Far too many things for me to go into today in detail. However, for deeper coverage of not just volume reset, but everything that we have discussed today, comprehensive coverage of all of these topics, along with other important audio volume design guidance, look for the audio volume experience on ABI products design guide available to you on the Alexa developer website. You are invited to join our Slack community, alexa.design, and please take a moment to fill out the survey after today's Tech Talk. Thank you for your time today. I truly hope that this has been a useful discussion for you in helping to develop experiences for users of Alexa built-in products that are delightful, successful, and audible.